Hello and welcome to this two-part video series inside of Blender with Octane, where we want to create this clay pot that you can see on the screen right now. And in this first part today, in this video, we want to take a look at how we can model this pot. And then in a the second video, part two, we will take a look at how we can create a material for our clay pot inside of Blender with the Octane Render Engine. So let's start. As you can see on the screen right now, I'm inside of Blender with the Octane Render Engine, but we won't use Octane for now. We just want to model our pod. So I'm in a 3D scene over here, and we will start by adding in geometry. We do that by pressing Shift A, and you can follow along with my key inputs um, in the bottom right hand corner. Um, under mesh up here in this menu that opened up, I will select the cylinder and we don't have to worry about anything down here. And now we can just take our cylinder and we pull it up so it stands upright basically on the center of our scene. And this is exactly what we want. I will now continue by going into edit mode. So we press tab. And then going into the face selection mode over here. And I will select the top face up here and I press delete and select faces. And I do the same for the bottom face down here. Now we are left with the outer part of our cylinder basically. And this is because I don't like these um, single faces up here and at the bottom because they cause some problems later on. So we just delete them now and we will fill in the bottom one um, in, in a while. Okay, so let's continue. Now we can go into one of the side views. I will take numpatch three and from here we can continue. Um, uh, first of all, I will set the overall height for our pot that we want to create and um, I will do that by going into the edge selection mode up here, pressing Alt and selecting the whole um, upper part of our um, cylinder. And now I will pull this up to basically double the height um, that we had previously. Um, that's fine for me. And now I will add loop cuts. And this is basically the technique that I use to create such a pod. There are many ways to create such a pod, but I really like this one. So I just take a loop cut and I basically go around here, should be sufficient. And when I've made this loop cut, then I can press S and I can scale this one. And now I will scale this one to right around here. That looks fine. Um, actually, I will go down just a bit like this. And now we can continue with our loop cuts. And I will continue with another loop cut right around here. That should be sufficient. I scale it up a bit larger than the one that we did previously. I think um, right around here should be good. And I will scale it up a bit. I will take this one a few millimeters up. And now we continue with our next loop cut. The next one will be around here maybe. That looks quite good. And we want to scale it up but we want a bit of curvature um, that goes uh, basically to the center of our cylinder again, so that we have a nice curve down here. Next loop cut um, around here, I would say. And now we want to go in quite drastically, basically around here, so that we get this cone shape basically. Next loop cut goes right around here. And now I really want to go to the center, basically 
right here. We can of course zoom in a bit that we can see better what we are doing. And now I want to do another loop cut that is right around here. And I want to scale it down that it almost matches this, uh, the one that we did before, like this. Now another one that we um, do in the middle over here. And now we set the curvature for our top part. So we want to go a bit outwards, but not as much. And to select the last um, edge loop basically up here, we go into the normal selection, edge selection, and now we press Alt and left click. And now we select the whole edge loop up here. And now we will scale this down to match basically the angle that we created before. So that should be it for the modeling for now. If I go out of the edit mode um, for this object, we can see that there are still these two holes. Of course, we want a hole at the top because our pot, there needs to be a, a hole for us to put something into the pot. But of course, the hole in the bottom is um, pretty bad. So we go to the underside of our object. And what I really like to do to fill this uh, hole down here is to make a certain fill that we avoid your yeah, artifacts when using a subdivision surface later. Um, and we will use uh, the following technique. I just press Alt and left click on the edge loop. So we get this edge loop selection. And now I will press E to extrude. And then I will press S to scale down. And now we can inset uh, or extrude these, uh, this edge into the center of our um, object. And I will do that once and then again, E and S for scale. And then we have this um, double face um, extrusion into the center of our object. And now while this edge loop is selected, I will press right click um, or better, I will go up to face the up here and then to grid fill down here. And this will create this um, quad fill for this um, um, hole that we had in our object. And this just avoids certain artifacts that can uh, occur when using um, a subdivision surface later. Okay, so that should be it for filling up our bottom part down here. And now we have to continue with um, giving this object a bit of thickness. And I like to do that by pressing or going into the face selection first and pressing A to select every face of our model. And then I really like to go into extrude along normals. And if I go in here and grab this little yellow thing, we can see that we now can create um, an extrusion along the normals. And I want to give this pot a bit of thickness like this, basically, that looks great. I really like to do this extrusion to the inside of our object, not the outside. Um, and this should be it. This thickness up here should be enough for the um, subdivision surface later to look good. We don't want to make our extrusion too thin because um, then that might uh, not look as good. So that's it. And as you can see, um, the topology still looks fairly nice. Okay, so um, let's go out of edit mode. And if we now go to the modifiers down here, we can go and add a subdivision surface. And I will crank this up to level three in the viewport and in the render. And you can see that we have quite a nice pot right now. And the thickness up here also looks quite good. I really like this result. Um, of course, we can select our object and go to shade smooth. And now it's uh, looking even better. 
but our handles are still missing and we will continue um, modeling them so select the object and now i will press this little monitor icon up here in order to um, hide our subdivision surface for now and if i go into edit mode back again um, we can start adding our handles i will deselect everything by just clicking into the void and the handles are actually pretty simple um, there are quite a lot of faces over here and we want to have our handles right on the screen axis down here basically and the faces that we want to use for our um, for our handles are the ones here and here and i will select these two faces up here and then i will go to the other side and right above the screen axis i will select these two by pressing shift and then left clicking in order for us to get all these faces selected these two and the ones at the on the other side of our object up here as well and now we will have to use this tool insert faces and if i select it and then i take this yellow circle down here and i scale it down we can create handle like this basically and it will do it for both sides so these sides and these sides of course you can change the size of these uh, two faces to affect the thickness of our handles but i will leave them like they are right now i think it gives the handles a nice uh, art artsy look pretty uh, abstract and now we do the same thing for the faces up here i will select these two while pressing shift left click in order to add to my selection and i will press shift and left click again over here with the faces on the other side of course you can do all of this with a mirror modifier but in this case it's just simpler for me um, to do it uh, that way and now we select the insert faces again and i scale down this one to right around here and that should be fine for now okay after that what we do now is we want to select all of our inserted faces so now we selected these two um, and these two and now we want to add the ones down here so hold shift and left click on these and now we have all inserted faces selected and i press delete and faces so now we basically have these holes in our model and we of course don't want that but we will use these to connect um, the handle up here we will do that one um, by one for the sides so i will start here make sure to be in the edge selection hold down alt and then click on this edge down here to make this edge selection and then we can press shift alt and click on the one up here in order to add this loop to the selection as well make sure not to select any of the edge loops um, over here just on one side and now we can press right click and we can go down to um, bridge edge loops so we click on that and as you can see that looks pretty ugly and is not what we want for our model but down here we have this bridge edge loops window and in here we will change a few things as you can see i already have a smoothness and a profile factor down here you can play with these values um, to your liking but what is important is the number of cuts in my case i will take a number of cuts of five this gives me this pretty nice um, shape of my handle and i really like this one of course you can change this number of cuts to whatever you like if i put it to seven for example there are more cuts um, i think five is great so i will leave it at five and of course you can also play with the smoothness and the profile factor down here 
I will leave them at these values because they give me the shape that I want for my um, pot. Great. So what you have to remember is the number of cuts that you did. So write down this number. And if I now click into the void, I can deselect um, these faces. And now I go over to this side of my pot and I will do the exact same thing. So um, let's press Alt and left click to select this edge loop. Now Shift and Alt, left click to select the other edge loop up here. Now right click to bring up the menu, press on bridge edge loops. And now we just have to change the number of cuts to the same that we used on the other side, in my case five. And now we have this pretty nice handle on the other side as well. I click into the void to go out of the selection. And of course you can see that this um, shading is pretty weird over here. This is because we don't have the subdivision surface active. If I press tab to go out of edit mode, you can see it looks pretty ugly. But if I now check on the subdivision surface, you can see that these handles look pretty nice. They have a nice uh, transition between our main body of the pot and the handle. Exactly what we want um, in the or inside of our pot, um, the topology also looks pretty nice. And this basically is it for this part. Um, I hope you could follow along in creating this pot. And in the second part, we would start creating a material for our pot. So I see you in the second part. So please consider liking and subscribing if um, you like this tutorial.